Hello and welcome everyone to today's demonstration of the Rent Post system. It is Thursday, August 28th, 2014, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and start off here at the very beginning of the system. I'm going to make this a uh, little bit larger so I can see it, but uh, you should see it just fine. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is where you would log in here. It's just saying that we're in a demo. Um, however, this is what your screen would generally look like. Uh, this is the home screen with the what if you're familiar with uh, you know Facebook or any other sort of uh, social media you get to see what uh, we would call say our, our display or news feed or something along those lines it's, it's basically an audit for you to be able to see exactly what is going on with all of your your um, your actual units and tenants and and payments and transactions that are going on for every person uh, within your organization. So as you can see here, it's showing that there are 22 delinquent tenants at the very top, five active work orders that need to be uh, assigned or or, uh, or urgent that, that need to be worked on. And then uh, here is our current occupancy rate at the very top. And uh, also you have the payments that have been posted for this particular unit. This is the last transaction that's happened and this was actually our, our, during our last demonstration so uh, nothing else has uh, been done at that point but um, what we'll do is kind of scroll down just a little bit so you can see some more of the transactions that are possible to be seen at this level and uh, I will also go through the tabs that are the individualized sections of the system so that you can see how uh, you can actually take a look at uh, every one of these areas. So uh, units and tenants, work orders, so we would actually involve vendors here. Marketing is a side that, that will be coming soon. We're actually working on some of that uh, currently. And uh, accounting, as well as some reporting. So that's just real quick. But um, back to the, the main screen. As you'll see here to the right, we have Get Set Up for Online Rent Collection through Rent Post. And uh, this will allow you to collect rent from your tenants online. Uh, that's just a short process. Fill out a little uh, form, and we can get that ready for you through ACH Network. If, um, if you actually have transactions pending, once that is set up, those will be showing here as well for you. So uh, if you, you have somebody uh, that is payment and processing, it's going to sit here and tell you exactly how much is in process. Uh, also on the right, you'll notice there's a to-do list. So this is your to-do list. If you're logged in under your account, it'll say this is what's assigned to you. This is how many days it has been due. This one's an old one, obviously. And you can add new ones. You can assign it to yourself. If you had other people who are managers or are other users within your company, you can actually assign them a to-do and give that description there. And you can save and add another one, too. So. The other side here is um, these are your contacts. These are your tasks to do, so you can go there as well and see those, and your documents. So we do have some document storage in here, whether that's lease agreements or um, any other things that you may need, whether it's uh, you're in the process of a dispossessory, you can obviously scan those in and, and have those at the ready or just drop them in from whatever native format they're in. Also, you have the messaging, so you can send messages uh, to and fro uh, between the tenants, vendors, or other members of your group, or owners even, that's that's another option. And then uh, support here, uh, rather prominent, so you can actually contact us through this. How can we help you? You can ask a question or, or search our knowledge base to, to try and self-answer uh, the question that you may have. So what I'll do first is, before getting into these individualized uh, sections of the software, I want to go into what are this, this side area here and show you what the the contacts page looks like. So it's rather a, much a directory and you can sort by their their role, right? So you have managers, tenants, owners, vendors, and other and uh, you can actually search for, for someone in particular or a vendor in particular and uh, these guys are actually an owner and a vendor which is probably rare but <laughs> anyway. Uh, you can add a contact here you can assign the type of contact they are. Right there, managers are the only ones that you actually have to add in a different area. That, and I'll show you that real quick, just simply because we're here. 
let's see, then your company, account, company, and then managers. So we have Demo, Demo, and Joe Blow, who's pending registration here. And these, uh, if you have an admin, they're the only ones that can add or and or remove, also remove uh, other managers or other users. So that's why that's in a different section. We don't really want everybody to have access to do that. Um, and some permissions uh, will be available there soon. Um, you know, greater detail, granular uh, permissions. So um, over here you'll see the number of contacts and the contacts that aren't assigned to a location. Uh, it is nice to be able to go ahead and assign a contact to a particular location, especially if they are a tenant or they are an owner. You definitely want to make that the case. Um, and then you can also group them by what they are as well. So over here on the right, you'll notice locations. And um, you know, some in Athens, some in Beverly Hills, some in Flushing, and then some other groups. So if you have contractors, plumbers, um, electricians, whatever the case may be, you can group them together and you have them at your ready. So I'll go ahead and click on that. So we're going to have them right there, give them a call, and you can actually send them messages through here, and you can assign um, some work orders to them in the system, which we'll, we'll get into here in just a little bit. Okay, so next, uh, I'm looking at the to-dos list after clicking on it here. Let me scroll down. There are no tasks or to-dos that are at this point assigned to me um, in this time period. There are a couple here to the side that you'll notice that are a few days old, so they're not really showing up here as to do today. So, And what we could do is actually reschedule those if we would like to start and end. And once again, that's another way to access that within the system that isn't just to the side on the home screen. So getting into the, uh, the document storage here, we can sort, we can group, so general, lease, invoice, receipt, legal, and also the file name or relation to a particular unit or tenant or owner or vendor. So you can do that that way. Uh, you can also obviously throw them in the, throw them in the trash there. Uh, but And these are stored in their native format, so you can actually drag and drop them from your desktop if you'd like to do that. You can choose the file, and you can assign what group they're going to be in as well. And obviously you can see there are six gigabytes here total for storage. At this point, we're not anywhere near there at this point either. So over here. Messaging center. You can mark as read, unread, delete, demo, testing. Here we are talking about what's going on, recent activity, and exam example message. So you can see the back and forth there. So you're not actually living within your email inbox anymore. You're, you're living within the system itself. So uh, for any communication, you have access to that as well as managers have access to to take a look and see, well, if this is assigned to someone, did you actually talk to them about it or not? You don't actually have to try and find uh, that message on a post-it note somewhere or on a piece of paper they had on their desk or through their email inbox or <laughs> whether they had a conversation about it by the water cooler, whatever it is, uh, it's right here within the system and you can audit that. You can see sent and deleted as well. So pretty straightforward there. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home screen. Okay, so next, where we're going to go is to the units and tenants. Okay, now, you can filter by available past due renewals and marketed, and you can go into the advanced and see what the price range, minimum square feet, bedroom bath, and you can also sort this way, so if you're looking for a particular unit, it'll go ahead and sort. You don't even have to hit enter. It'll go ahead and pull them up. You may have multiple uh, units at the same address, so that's also an option, so we'll pull up all of those as well. And uh, these are other uh, ways of tagging. So you see gas range, gas water heater, parking fee, and elevator. You could even sort by that too, so... Gas range, gas range, gas range. So you have three of those. So that's the IntelliSort there. You can do it by address, renewal date, 
and due date of when, when they should make their payments is there as well. So we'll go back and unfilter that. Okay. And what IntelliSort is doing is it is sorting whether or not you have some that are late and then it goes in a little bit more granularly and says, okay, then what, what is the address? Then what is um, you know, the last, last conversations that have, have happened on this particular account? And uh, you can also see that here. So this guy is, is late, uh, $70. He's, he's late for a little while here. We can actually click there to see who this person is. You can see their history. Recorded payments, rental revenue, late fees. Over here, what the rent amount is, security deposit, and uh, what the actual late fee is that is assigned to him. And I'll get into that a little bit more so you can see how those are assigned automatically and which group they're, they're, uh, they're tied to as well. So I'll go down here. So for this one, uh, for example, you can actually click that, and that gives you the edit unit details. So you can go in, change anything that you need to change, time zone, bedroom, bath. Maybe you added a bedroom, or uh, maybe you want to add another tag. Select who the unit owner is. Maybe they've changed hands. Maybe another person who is within your group has decided to purchase a unit from another one of the people that are a part of your group. You can switch that over. No problem. Here are the management fees. Once again, this is the flat fee and percentage. So these are some others that have been created, 9% or 50. Uh, these are the fees that you would have uh, for, for managing it, for managing these properties. So. And you can always add a new one here, too. Create a nickname. Is it a percentage? Is it a flat fee and percentage? Is it just a flat fee? Vacancy fee, you can save and go back, and then you can add that as the particular fee for that particular unit and go forward from there. Next, uh, we'll go over here to the side so you can see where you can add a unit. It's all blank, looks very, very similar to what the edit unit looks like. Manager tags, unit owner, management fees once again. You can upload photos. Just grab those from, from wherever. Unit group, here are some options, and you can always edit this. This is what makes the most sense for your group, so you may and should probably already be uh, grouping particular units depending on um, how you work, right? So you know, Red Fox makes sense to these guys. Unique rentals, uh, commercial rentals, that's another group, and you can pull all of those up, put them together, you can see that. Desired monthly rent. Do you want to offer individual room leasing? You just check that. You have that option. You can also forbid online payments if you have this set up for online rent collection. Maybe you have somebody that's fallen uh, you know, significantly behind and you want to bar them from paying you back. Uh, you can also do that here. This one's automatically checked because it's not set up for online rent collection, but you can you can decide what you'd like to do there on a case-by-case -case basis. And also the max tenant occupancy. These are operating accounts, and um, this is basically what your deposit account would be. Um, you can say, you know, test check and escrow and deposit funds, but um, if you are doing the online rent collection, you'd have, say, one checking account that you can deposit the funds into and then um, you know, send those out however you need to after that. Go here, add a prospect. This is just information if you're taking on um, you know, some, some new potential tenants. You can have the screening notes and all here and tie that to a particular unit. Once again, some stats. These are stats that are available at the very beginning on the home screen as well, but we have them to the side so you can access them at any time. Here are tenant stats. This is showing how many tenants are not set up for online collection and uh, number of tenants that are pending registration. So we've actually sent the um, we've actually sent the notification to their email address so they can get set up for online rent collection. And where that is is here. And let's see Get this actually. And let's see. Let's see Yeah. 
right here. Set up online access, and you just plug in their email address, and then it'll say set up now. They'll get a notification. What they can do then is log into their uh, tenant portal and fill out their billing details so that uh, they can, and that, that is their bank account information. And then what they'll do is they'll be able to select whether they want to do automatic payments where they never have to log back in again necessarily. Um, or they can just log back in, they'll get a notification of when their rent is due every month and um, when it might be late, and then they'll be able to go ahead and uh, log back in and make that payment manually is how we would say that. So, um, And really that would be up to their discretion. Um, you may have something worked into the uh, your contract that says if they do set up for automatic payments, maybe they get a discount or something, uh, but you could, uh, you could talk to them about that and, and set that up accordingly and verify whether or not they are set up for that too. So. But uh, I'm going to click this again. I'm going to show some of these other options under this particular tenant. And actually, before I do that, uh, renewal. So you can see when the renewal is. You can see when the, the, the amount is due. This says not applicable, but that just means it's not set. You can record a payment through here. So it can be a check, cash, or other. The amount. If you have a check or reference number, plug that in. So you'd add that right here. And you can actually save and print the receipt through here, especially if they walk in the office and they give you cash. Here's your receipt. They walk off. So, add or adjust charges. The type. So you have a few tables here. You can select from, and the amount. Put in a description. Bill date, due date, done. And you can accept partial payments there too. So there are any charges set up for this one, but otherwise you'd be able to set up and issue a credit. You can modify the lease, transfer the unit, move someone out here. Let's put that so you can see. What were the reasons, notes, charges remaining, balance, and then move them out. It's very important to do so that if they are set up for online rent collection and it is automatic, um, that will continue to add charges and it will continue to bill them or pull from their account. So that's one of the things you want to definitely make sure that if somebody is moving out, that you move them out on a, on a timely basis. So, Because the system isn't going to know any different if someone's moved out and, and it's not set in the system that they have moved out. That's something to be cognizant of. Once again, here's the profile. You can do many things here, recording payment and just charges, print statement. Um, so there are a few areas where you can do very similar um, transactions with them as well. And you can print their statement here. I'll zoom in so you can see a bit better, get a look at all the details that are shown on there. Once again, you can edit. Have we sent them the setup online access for tenant? Yes, we've sent that. We can see that there. Or we can remove them completely, whatever you decide to do. I'm going to go up here so you once again see some of this, the bank account, photos associated, owner of the unit, and management fees. We can duplicate this unit or we can delete it as well. So that's pretty much it for the units and tenants page. We'll move over to the work orders. So right here to the right, you see once again you can add a new work order. Over here you can filter by the type of work order or the unit that it's associated with. So there's some fire damage, you got some notes, availability. And we can edit the availability. These are the guys that have been selected. They're also in our system. We can edit them and remove them. They'll get notification through email when something is assigned to them. And they'll be able to log into their vendor portal and see the details of this as well with the pictures and, and the information of when this unit is actually available and the contact information of the, uh, the tenant that is in that location. 
so that they can reach out to them and make sure that it's a good time for them to show up. You can chat with them. You get a bit more information. So we found an insurance claim. Reply. You can attach more pictures. They can attach the pictures. Uh, also, tenants can, and, and they can see that, and, and owners can see, see any of these as well that are associated with them so that everyone is, uh, is able to see the transparency of the system and be able to find out, okay, where, is, where are we on this particular item? And um, so the, the owner, if they happen to go out there and they see that it's completed and they've signed off on it, they can go ahead and let you know in the office without you having to go out there. Same thing with the, uh, the tenants that would be there. They can go ahead and upload pictures and say, hey, this is done, or hey, this isn't done, hasn't been done correctly. Here are some pictures about that. Let you know so that you're not having to go out and make that, uh, inspection immediately, you have more information right right there at your fingertips rather than having to spend half of the day driving out there to, to find out to say, hey guys, do you mind uploading a couple pictures? Uh, let me know if you see anything that, that isn't kosher. So, Once again, you can print this. So this is, uh, maybe you have a, an in-house vendor, maybe you have an in-house maintenance man, and they don't use a computer, and they don't use a cell phone or a smartphone, you can print this out to them and give them the information that they need. Uh, it says, here's when to go, here's the people to talk to, you can put the notes in, and, and print that off for them. They can take that on their you know, merry way. So You can change the work order status. You need more information. We're completed, unpaid, paid, delinquent, closed, and archived. So you, you can have access to that continually. And you can change that priority. and you can reassign it and edit from there as well. You can see who have uh, what, uh, what vendors have been assigned to work orders here on the side. Work order stats, there are five that are open, zero set that are submitted this far, this month. So, uh, And then um, how many of these are you getting on average per month? And um, units by most work orders this year. This is a very important one because you can see what are your troublesome units. Do you want to continue to uh, manage this unit? And especially if you're an owner, you'll be able to see, okay, man, I, I might have 100 properties and, and now I can see this is a troublesome property. I keep having issues with either the tenant or I keep having issues with the, the structural integrity or other, other things that may be going wrong with this plumbing or what have you. And uh, I can see, do I want to really continue owning this property? Do I want to sell this property? Uh, is this thing really even profitable for me any longer? So uh, that's uh, some, some interesting stat to take a look at as well. And here are a sorting from uh, the status of these as well. So this is another way to take a look at it. And you can once again do the Intel sort, see where they're at, see who's assigned, unassigned, and the urgency. You can sort by all of those things. We'll move on to uh, just get you take a look at the marketing section. We're going to be pushing out some some units and tenants, doing some tenant screening and all here soon. Uh, we do have a new API that is coming out, and once that is out, uh, some of that will be uh, be coming out as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, once again, I'm going to go into accounting. We're going to look at the receivable side here. This is where you can plug in the payments. You can actually accept a partial payment as well. In the check number, it might be 12, whatever. It does say partial here, and you can see where it is going to be applied. Save and print the receipt, or just save payment. And it's showing you where those are coming from, too. So if you, if you might, uh, let's say you receive some checks still, maybe not everyone is set up for online rent collection, you can come through here, have all those checks sorted uh, however you would like, and uh, then you can just kind of go through and just bang out all of the numbers, all the check numbers, select what, uh, what you've received, and then whenever you're ready for your reporting or you're ready for um, let's say you're, everything else that you need to see with revenue, uh, you can actually, um, you've already knocked that out. You're not having to go multiple places in order to, put that information in, so. And these are the totals. And you can export or print. And you can see by what account they're assigned to as well. On or before due date. So that's pretty much it on that. Revenue, these are, 
once you've recorded those payments, this is where they're going to show up. You can take a look at those. Here are the total amounts here. If you have some pending payments, they'll show up as well. Anything that's failed, so maybe uh, you have an online rent payment that's coming through and it's overdrawn and it didn't go through, you'll see that here. Or maybe the account number was incorrect. That's always a possibility. So uh, that lets you know that, especially if it's someone new who you're adding on there. Did they give you the right account number or not? You see that. Once again, this is information you can see at some of the other, other sides as well. So we try and put everything up front so you're not having to run reports constantly. It's already natively within the application. Payables, so do you have to send some money to an owner? Do you have to send some money to a vendor? You can manage that all right here. When is it recorded? Reference number, pay. How much? Which account is it coming from? And you can confirm your payment there. This is to add a new one. Who is this going to? The notes. Where is it coming from? Paid, unpaid. Once again, you can export or print. And you can sort. Here's some of the expenses that have been pushed out. We don't have any right now on here. We should probably do a few to show you, but uh, I'll do that for next demonstration. <laughs> Going on to the banking section, you see in your operating account the funds that are in process, your current balance, test checking account here, this is another account, escrow, it could be your, you know, say your deposit account. You see what has been accepted here, view all those deposit slips. And you can add a new bank account here as well. Total undeposited funds, these are the ones that are pending, obviously, uh, late fees, total amounts, what account is that, and some older deposits listed here, we generate a deposit slip, uh, select this. Select a couple of them. So, what I can see here is, okay, I'm going to be depositing this, this, and this. I'm going to deposit slip for that particular account. That'll pull up for me. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. Next, the accounting side, the GL accounts. You see your escrow account, you see your accounts receivable, security deposits, what, however you want to select that. You can actually edit these numbers as well to make it make sense for your organization. Edit, hide, or remove if it's not pertinent to you. Other bits of revenue, miscellaneous revenue, some utilities. And on and on. So I'm going to go into journal entries. So you can see here we can sort through the date range, whichever account we'd like to look at. Once again, you can print or export. And here are the credits and the debits for this particular one. We can remove it and take a look at this guy, see what's going on. His owner portal is disabled. Okay, so here's property management. We'll go ahead and generate these. We can see um, which one of these have, and it is sorted by your management fee. So you have someone 10% management fee, flat fee, plus percentage, flat fee and, and percentage, and then the time period. You can actually add a date range if it's a little bit offset, a little bit different than your usual. 
Get up here. <laughs> Estimated fees for the period for that. You have the number. This is who this should be going to. Some of the owner statements, and I'll go ahead and pull one of these up. Actually, this is, right. this is generate. There we go. This is uh, this is showing what the performance is, the work orders, under distribution and revenue. We go through here and take a look at all the actual you know, units and number of transactions. Everything looks good. Got the management fees listed out here. Say, okay, looks good. Success. So, actually download that as a PDF as well. And send that along to them. You can actually generate that and they'll have access to it on their, their owner portal. Okay. We'll move on to the report side. So here, once again, you can print and export. You can sort by unit groups. So you can create a, you know, once we what we looked at before, we, whatever makes sense to you, whether it's a particular apartment or not, or you can sort by the owner or both. You can filter once again. Say 17. I'm going to go here and take a look at the whole picture. Have that. Go ahead and say print on this one too. Let's see, take a look at this. So once again, if you have to mail anything like this to someone, it's nice to be able to have it and just go ahead and print it out, send it all at once. And that's your that's your standard rent roll, by the way. So uh, owner statements. You select the owner. You have access to that as well. Go ahead and send it out. You can email it through the system as well. Here you go. Please see your copy. Attach as a PDF. And once again, there's that date range. Tenant statements. Go ahead and send that out. You can print that. Otherwise, they're going to have that within their, their portal as well to be able to see it. Tenant delinquencies. You can sort that, sort that by number of days late and the unit or group. And once again, you can type this in to see what's, you know, sort it that way. Upcoming renewals. Click on that. Okay, yeah, some of them are past due. Well, they have a renewal coming up. Maybe they need to get caught up. And then finally, you can sort by the, the work orders here for this particular unit or group. You see a submission breakdown. And there you are. So that's pretty much the high-level overview for the demonstration. Now, if you have any questions, please let us know. Feel free to comment on our YouTube page or reach out to us. You can send an email to me. It's Stephen with a V at rentpost.com. Or uh, if you're already logged in, you can always uh, chat with us and uh, or submit a support ticket if you really want to. We can, you can reach us that way too. So uh, anyway, uh, hope uh, everything's going well and uh, be in touch. Thanks.